What's up, friends? Welcome back to the podcast. You guys, I just wanted to touch base and just say hello. This is going to be a really short episode, but I wanted to get an episode up this week. But it's been really busy around here. We just got a lot going on with kids' schedules and life and all the things, but I've been diving deep. I'm working on a writing project and I'm coming up on some deadlines, some self imposed deadlines, but I just needed to put my head down and just hunker down and get some stuff done. And it feels really good. But if you've ever worked on a project, you know how discombobulating, I like that word, discombobulating, discombobulating it can be and just feeling overwhelmed. Like, oh my gosh, am I ever going to be able to finish this? Is it going to turn out how I thought it would? And, And all the things. And of course, it never does, right? Things always go a little different than what we thought. But It feels good to be back in the land of the living. And so I was talking with some friends last week about their struggle with embracing that God is like for them and that he loves them and that he has a good plan for their life and and all the things, right? And this is all the things that we're told, but yet it's really hard to internalize. And so we were really unpacking that last week and we were talking about why is it so hard for us to embrace God's grace for ourselves. Like, listen, we're really good at giving it to other people. Well, sometimes we are. Sometimes we're not. Sometimes we're judgy and all the things. I was emailing with a pastor friend last week and I was telling him, like, as much as I emphasize grace in my life and grace in my work, oh my gosh, I really struggle. I judge judgmental people. So people that are harsh and judgmental, I judge them. And I don't know, it's just, it's my soft spot. And so And then I judge myself for being judgmental. It's like this whole thing. It's this merry-go-round in my brain. And, you know, but I think it's part of our human experience. So anyways, but I wanted to talk about today really briefly, especially if you are one of those folks, one of us who struggles with really embracing and understanding that God is loving and that God adores us and that he has our best interest in mind and all of that. So anyways, I'm grateful you're here. I'm grateful to be here. And I'll see you in the episode. Welcome to a Holy Mess Podcast. All right, my friends, we all know life can be so difficult and painful at times, especially when we're carrying grief or loss or wrestling with shame about our past, anxiety about our future, or frankly, like we are just not enough. But there has to be so much more for us. There is hope and joy, peace, love, fun, purpose, and a reason that you, my friend, are on this planet. Let's partner with God so you can be who he created you to be as you wrestle through and trudge through your mess. Hi, I'm Danny, a recovering alcoholic, a mom, a wife, a mentor, and dust. We are only here for a moment. Let's live like it. I'm just like you. I'm a holy mess most days. Actually, every day. Let's have some fun and laugh while trudging through our mess. This stuff doesn't need to be dry and boring. Let's dig in. Okay, so like I said, this episode really came out of nowhere. It came from a conversation I had last week with a couple of friends, and it's really been in my head and my heart. And, you know, you guys, one of the things that we talk a lot about in the Feel Better Journey, my group coaching program, is how experience in life and life experience teaches us, and it trains us, and it molds us, and it shapes us. And the things that we've been through, they define us. And I know we're supposed to say, like, no, no, nothing but Jesus defines us. But hello, that's not true. (laughs) Like, let's just be real. There's other things in life that define us. For instance, if you're a fireman, that defines you. You have gone through studies and physical endurance stuff, and you know more about fires and preventative fires and, and all the things that I could even dream to even understand, right? So in essence, that knowledge defines you, right? Like it defines who you are and it it helps you see life through a certain lens, right? I'll never forget one of my good friends, his name's Don. He's a retired fireman. He was actually a fire chaplain for many years. And I'll never forget, we had our barbecue up against our house one time and he came over and, you know, to me, it didn't seem unsafe or anything, but he's like, that's a fire hazard. Like, you guys need to move that barbecue. So he like literally went over and moved our barbecue and he saw things from a lens that I would have never even noticed. And he was saying that like our awning, the way it was over, like if, the barbecue got too hot. It could potentially start a fire, yada, yada, all the things. And so a normal everyday human being would have never even thought that this barbecue could have started a fire, right? But Don, because of his knowledge, his experience, his wisdom, you know, it just kind of defines how he walks through this world. He just sees things with, you know, fire safety in mind, right? And God bless him. He makes the world a better place. 
you know, and so you guys, what I'm saying is there's different things in our life that do change our lens and that do affect us, right? And so if you had a critical parent or a critical pastor or a critical teacher or anybody who meant anything to you in your life and they were critical and condemning and unsupportive, I'm telling you, you're carrying that lens in life. And it's hard to work through that lens. It's hard to believe that, you know, this God that is unseen that carries us through our days. It's hard not to project that he's not critical of us or that he's supportive of us. Like it's those filters, those experiences in life, you guys, they really affect us in every way. And I think they really affect us in our relationship with God. I mean, it's just the way it is. And so, and I'm not saying that it needs to stay like that, but I'm just saying we need to be really aware of the fact that if we're feeling distant from God, sometimes it's because of our childhood. Sometimes it's because of the critical father that we had, or, oh my gosh, the critical mother that we had. Or it's because if we've been betrayed by a friend and, you know, honestly, even unconsciously, we think to ourselves like, well, gosh, God let it happen. Like God allowed it to happen. Right. And so we wonder why we struggle with trust. We wonder why we struggle with really believing that God's grace is for us. And I just uh, here's what I want to say to you today. I don't really have any other huge big takeaway other than just to say, if you struggle with trust or if you struggle with believing that God is for you or that he is even like really good and really loving and really caring, maybe it's not necessarily God's fault that you feel that way, but maybe and most likely it's because of the people in your life that have harmed you. The parent figures that were supposed to be loving and compassionate and welcoming and encouraging, but they were rejecting and harmful and unsupportive and even passive aggressive. And oh my gosh, if you were raised by a narcissist, like that's a whole other ball of wax to deal with. You guys, but this is what we get to do as we grow older and as we grow up and as we mature spiritually and emotionally and in all the ways, we get to unpack the truth of our life. We get to call a spade a spade. We get to say, oh my gosh, my biological dad was kind of harsh with me. And so of course I feel like God has a harsh tone with me. I'll never forget, I was talking with a friend and he was saying how God kind of slaps him upside the head sometimes and just really like smacks him and is like, knock it off. What are you doing, you idiot? And I'll never forget, I was like, oh my gosh, you really think like that's God's voice? And he's like, yeah, it's totally God's voice. Totally catches my attention. And I'm like, how does it make you feel inside? And he's like, well, I just feel like God's always watching. And he's got like a harsh, like he's just got this like stare down behind my back. And he's watching my every move, just waiting for me to mess up so he can just smack me upside the head. And I'm like, did your dad used to smack you upside the head? Like, did your dad used to wait for you to mess up? And he's like, oh, my gosh, all the time. Like, he just couldn't wait for me to blow it. And he told me the story. He came off the baseball field. He had struck out and his dad like, you know, yelled at him and then really put him down and, and how that memory stays with him. Right. And I was like, oh, man, like, no wonder you think that's the same tone that Father God has for you. And you guys, I, I just want you to know, like, that's not been my experience with Father God. Like, and trust me, I had to work through a lot of parent stuff. Right. You know, and I've come so far. Oh, my gosh. My parents did the best they could with what they had. And we joke about how you know, we can only give what we have. And I've had just some really rich conversations lately as my parents age, and they'll just laugh at some of the stuff that they did when we were kids. Now, trust me, when I was a kid, I wasn't laughing. But now all these years later, as I've worked through my stuff and done some therapy and had, a, you know, those conversations with my parents that I'm blessed to have been able to have, because so many of us can't have these harder conversations with our parents. Like it's just not safe or it's impossible or they're just so narcissistic. They can't handle the truth. They can't handle how their negativity affected you. And if that's you, man, I just want to say I'm so sorry. And that is not God's intent. Like God just weeps for you. But I think it's really important that somehow we do some visualization, we do some pausing, and we just acknowledge like, man, God, I want to learn who you are separate from who my parents were or separate from my biological dad and the impact that he had on me or my biological mom or my adoptive parents or these adoptive pastors who have been harsh or had a harsh tone or a judgmental tone. Like I, I want to kind of divorce myself of those things. And I want to just start fresh and be like, God, who are you to me? And what tone do you have with me? And is that really God's tone? And 
you guys, many years ago, I started reading the Bible through kind of a softer tone, a tone of compassion and a tone of grace. A pastor friend had recommended that, that if you just literally look at the scripture from a gentler tone, oh my gosh, just hearing Jesus's words in a softer, gentler way, it can change the game for us as well. And so I just want to encourage you, like if you're feeling distant from God or you feel like God is just harsh and mean and, you know, God has thick skin. So I think absolutely bring it to him and be like, are you harsh? Like, are you mean? Like, have you been too hard on me? Like all the things, like whatever you need to do with God, but also just acknowledge that our viewpoint of God and even our lens from life is really jaded from our experience. You guys, I'm telling you, like, if you don't feel safe to even really pray, maybe it's because you never felt safe to bring anything to one of your parents. Like, you never felt safe to come to your parents with a problem or an issue. And it was really confusing for me for a long time of like, really, like God accepts me just as I am and he loves me just as I am. And I don't need to earn it. I don't need to work for it. Like, it just felt so, it felt so discombobulating. I really like that word. But I just want to encourage you guys, just remember and just remind yourself, like sometimes we feel distant from God and it's because of our history. It's because of the pastor that hurt us. It's because of the leadership that hurt us that not actually the Lord. And so I think just being aware of the lens with which we look through life, and this is what the stuff we do in the Feel Better journeys, we're really dealing with like self-awareness and we're really figuring out like why we believe the things we believe and why do we feel the way we feel. And once we can start articulating that, you guys, I'm telling you, we have so much more bandwidth and so much more capacity to choose. We have our agency back to actually decide what we believe and what we want to feel. Sometimes we're just tossed to and fro with our feelings because of these life experiences that still live within us. They still have their claws within us from hurtful things that people have said, or especially parents. And so, man, if you had a rough childhood and your parents were rough and mean with you, I just want to just tell you I love you. And that's not the way God intended it to be. And this stuff still affects us. And it, there's no shame in that. There's no denying it either. And so I just want to encourage you to think about, like, could your relationship with the Lord be negatively impacted because of your relationship with your parents or relationship with other leaders or adult figures in your life when you were being raised? So it can really, really help give us our power back in our relationship with the Lord and can really help us just get our agency back and just believe that God's grace and his love and his care and his compassion and his plan for your life is real and, and it's it's tangible. And But you guys, it's such a dance and it's such a process at times. So just be patient with yourself if that's a struggle for you. I know it's been a struggle for me off and on through the years, but, you know, and just talking with my friends last week, I just realized, man, so many of us, we're so looking through the lens from life and from our own history. And Sometimes that's good and sometimes that's helpful and sometimes it's not. Sometimes our history or our lens can be actually really sabotaging our futures. And so that's one of the things that we try to do, you know, with the podcast and with the coaching programs and all of this is try to clean the lens with which we look through life with so that we can have a healthier mindset, a healthier heart set and really embrace who we are created to be so that we can live this one life and enjoy it and not feel screwed by our history or by our choices or by our past, but actually live empowered into tomorrow. And you guys, oh man, sorry, I get fired up when I start thinking about the future stuff, because I think it's so empowering when we can kind of get our power back and really partner with the Lord to build the life that we want to build. And, you know, we don't have magic wands over here. We don't get to magically take, you know, hard circumstances away. But man, we're going to do all we can to live empowered into today and to not be harmfully defined by the past, but actually let the past kind of be our power into the future. And, you know, they say it and I, I say it and I really mean it, but like the misery that we've been through can really turn into the ministry that we have here on this planet. Anyways, OK, you guys, I'm so grateful you're here. I hope this episode encouraged you. I know there's not like three takeaways and go do these four things and you're going to feel better. but I just want you to know you're seen and that if you had hard parents, man, it's no wonder if you kind of struggle with Father God and with Holy Spirit and with Jesus and, and all the things like that's OK. There's there's nothing wrong with you because of that. It just means it's a little bit harder. But I'm telling you, I know people who've experienced just horrible things with leaders and with parents in their lives. And yet they have just an extraordinary, intimate relationship 
with the Lord and they can actually receive his grace and his love. And it takes a little bit of recalibrating our minds and our hearts and our experience. And it takes some grief because we have to grieve what we didn't have. And, you know, it takes a little bit of work, but I'm telling you, it's not impossible. I promise you that. So, all right, Lord, thank you for my friend. Thank you for who you've made them to be. Lord, if they had a rough experiences in life, especially with parents or, or leaders that meant a lot to them, Father, I pray that you would just nurture those places in them and, and help help us all, Lord, to know your goodness and your grace and your mercy and, and to stand in your love and, and what that means for us. And bless my friend in Jesus' name. Amen. Grateful you're here, you guys. And I'll talk with you in a few days. Love you. Oh, and don't forget to sign up for my email list. The link is in the show notes. I'm telling you, the emails is where it's at. I'm going to start sharing little excerpts from a book that I'm writing, and I'm really excited to start sharing that with my email list. So join the email list. You can, of course, unsubscribe at any time, but don't. Why would you want to? I mean, come on, you're here. Enjoy it. All right. I love you guys. Glad you're here. Hello, my friend. If this episode blessed you, made you laugh, or triggered you, hey, that's growth. Please do me a favor and share this with a friend. And if you feel led, please leave a written review for the show. That really helps us out. Don't forget you are in good company if you're feeling more broken than you'd like to admit. And you are more loved than you can ever imagine. Have a great week. See you next time.